Hey everyone, I'm Tom. And I'm Caitlin. And you are watching Mondays with the Mortons. Welcome back. This week we are going to be talking about repairing our hydraulic landing gear in the front of our RV. Uh, so if you're here for that topic, you can go ahead and skip to the time on screen. Since our last update, we had a few more days with Kyle and Olivia of driving and vibing. We had a pretty good time with them. Yep, and they even helped us with our hydraulics issue. One thing we got to do with them that was a lot of fun was we went to Mobile, Alabama, and we got to go on a duck boat tour. Which means that we got into this duck boat bus, and it's an amphibious bus, which means it drives around and then it also can drive into the water and be a boat. It's a tourist thing. They got a tour guide that teaches you all about the area. We learned a ton about Mobile, Alabama, like it's the first place where Mardi Gras actually took place, not New Orleans. And we found out that's where our military builds a lot of their warships. Along with all kinds of other things, it was a great tour. They did a video all about it. Pretty go, funny video. <laughs> I'll link it uh, probably above and below. Uh, so definitely go over and check that video out. It was a ton of fun. So after leaving Fairhope, Alabama, we traveled to Baton Rouge, which is where we are today. And we came here to visit our really good friends, Josh and Kaylee of the Freedom Theory. It has been so great to see them again. They are such good friends of ours. It's been over a year since we saw them on the other side of the country and they just had a baby. Yeah. Yeah, so if you guys ever wondered what it might be like to start a family while full-time RVing, you should definitely go over to their channel and check it out. They are doing a fantastic job. They're gonna be such wonderful parents and we're extremely excited for them. So let's get into what we wanna talk about today. We are going to go over how we repaired our hydraulic landing gear on the front of our RV. The problem was that it was not holding the front of our RV up anymore. It would lift it up um, and it moved it up and down fine. We were able to take it off the truck, but our front of our fifth wheel would slowly sink down, primarily in cold weather, actually. Yeah, we had been noticing this for a while now, probably going on a year. Yeah. And uh, it, it seemed to only happen when it was cold outside. We were always able to fiddle with them enough and eventually they would hold. So we kind of kept pushing this problem off and pushing it off, which was probably the wrong thing to do because eventually they just quit holding the front of the fifth wheel up altogether. And last week we talked to you guys, we had to park on a hill so that we could let it drop all the way to the ground and we could still be somewhat level. But there was always this fear of, well, if, if it's going bad, will we not be able to lift the RV up at some point and get it back onto the truck? Because if we can't do that, then we are kind of in a pickle. So there are a lot of things that can cause this problem. You can either have air in your system, which we tried to fix by bleeding all the lines. We did that. The electric solenoid valves that actually control the hydraulic fluid in and out of the pump could be leaking a little bit and allowing those legs to drop as well. I actually replaced that solenoid valve didn't solve the problem. We also replaced all the fluid in the hydraulic system, figuring that maybe there was some metal particulates or stuff in the fluid, didn't fix the problem either. We even tried heating the, the rams sometimes to get them to hold. We did all kinds of things and nothing was working. So what we finally determined with talking to some hydraulic shops was that the hydraulic rams themselves were probably bypassing fluid past their pistons internally. Now remember, we have a 2005 DR RV and they so they have some pretty old landing gear on them initially we thought that we could just replace the hydraulic legs with uh, the same ones um, unfortunately reaching out to Lippert they had discontinued our style of landing gear what was it like only six months ago or something they no longer make the actual rams that lift up the legs so replacing the hydraulic rams like for like was not an option. The second option was we could actually replace them with the new style hydraulic landing gear that you see on a lot of the RVs, but that would require cutting out the old ones and welding in a whole new system because ours are not like the new ones at all. And that would require tearing out the entire solar system I just put in and a whole bunch of other stuff. So. I was not keen on doing that at all. Doing some research online, we found a guy who specializes in repairing these landing legs on these older units. You can find him at Robert's Quality RV. He is in Indiana. Mm -hmm. And we reached out to him and talked with him about this problem. And he agreed that most likely our rams were failing internally and that they're gonna have to be removed and rebuilt. Unfortunately, Robert couldn't get us in till mid-May and we weren't going to be even close to Indiana come mid-May. So we decided to try to go ahead and do this repair ourselves. So the first big step was getting the landing gear 
out from underneath the RV and that it was very difficult because our landing gear are about 40 inches tall up inside the RV, meaning they have to go out that far down the bottom. And that is gonna either have, two things are gonna have to happen. You're gonna have to lift the front of the RV way off the ground and pull them out, which isn't really great because it's gonna be super crooked and put a lot of stress on all kinds of stuff. Or we were gonna have to find a hole in the ground to drop them down into. And that's what we decided to do. Tom got online and scoured the satellite imagery for the area that we were in, looking at a lot of big parking lots, looking for storm drains to see if we could find something that we could pull out and use to drop the legs down into. We found one at a Walmart not too far from where we were staying in Fairhope. And we went, out, went and scouted it and determined that that was probably going to work. Walmart. There's an option. I found this abandoned factory and there's a couple pits. This one's nice and dry. Oh, it's even harder to lift out though. So we cashed in on our helping with driving and vibing Kyle and Olivia with their Airstream and had them come out and meet us at Walmart where we parked over one of these storm drains. We already took the front landing leg pad off and the bolt that's underneath here, we're gonna wrap some rope around to use ropes to hold this up. Once we were all set up, we started to disassemble the system. And that first entailed taking all the hydraulic lines off of the actual rams themselves, which turned out to be a little messy. <laughs> a pretty big mess. All right, we got the outside landing gear set up and ready to drop, but we got to take it apart inside so that we can drop it down. These right here are the hydraulic lines. We got to take these off. Um, we've got them supported, so hopefully the jack won't go anywhere. I've already loosened it a little bit and it's dripping. Um, once you take this off, it is going to drip a little bit, so we've got some uh, lots of paper towel and some plastic containers. We're going to try to set those in. Once these are off, then we can take the big bolt out and drop it down. Okay. Oh, frick. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you get it? Yeah. It's I'm covered in oil. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I thought you were ready. All right, I just put a, a jar on there at the end of the lines to catch any additional leakage that might occur. Our hydraulic rams are a style where the actual ram itself is inside an additional leg, and that additional leg is what provides any stability for aft and side to side. So we needed to be able to drop out the entire ram and that additional leg. So we went ahead and disconnected the bolt at the top and dropped that leg down, not over the storm drain yet, so that it just set down on the ground. All right, so that's all the way to the bolt. Perfect, perfect. Okay, yeah, you, right. whenever you are. Yeah, right. that's it. You got the weight. So. Okay, I feel it. Oh, that thing's still attached. What's attached? Oh, it's, it's something. Oh, no, oh, so you got it. So yeah. you're holding you it right now. Yeah, all right. Well, this is going through there, but it's all right. Mm. Okay. Look at that. So there we go. The ram is free. Yeah. So on the inside, I just took out the main bolt that holds the actual hydraulic ram in. So now the hydraulic ram is completely collapsed inside this tube and the tube is coming out. Now we're gonna open this drain, move forward, drop it down and take the entire ram out. Okay, so let's put this board across it. And we'll just kind of set the jack on that. So yeah, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna come forward just that far. Yeah. So. Okay, go! So we can go ahead and lift, lift it up. All right. Let's see what this feels like. All right. Okay. So go ahead and start lowering it down. You feel comfortable with you're the only one on the center part? Yep. How do you know when you it's going to be You guys are going to hold all the weight. All right. I got you. And then you're just going to guide it. Yes. Keep going. Yes, you're pretty much doing all the work right yeah. now. Really? Well, you hold, hold it tight because it will fall. All right, keep going, guys. We're it. All right, let it go straight. All right, lift it up. There we go. Nice. 
Good job, guys. All right, we are on the other side now after a successful removal of this side. Um, since we sprayed hydraulic fluid everywhere, I've got a, uh, a jar taped to the hydraulic lines on the other side, and we just pulled this down all the way to basically suck air into this and force all the hydraulic fluid over to the other side. So now this has a whole bunch of air in the top of this one, so it shouldn't squirt hydraulic fluid everywhere this time. All right. Yeah. So this is what we got to take apart over here. We've got the um, hydraulic, the actual hydraulic valve here, and we replaced this already trying to fix this problem. It didn't work. This big red block here is a uh, restricted valve that helps prevent the jacks from dropping really fast when the uh, when you release them. The restricted has a little pin in it that prevents it from flowing very easily. Um, so we're gonna have to take apart these same two lines, and then it should drop out. All right, that's off. The AC was pumping out some cold air when I got back. Okay. Let me see if I can get a socket on those. That would be probably the cleanest way to take these off. Taking out the final bolt on that holds this jack on, and then we can drop this one down too. Right, here comes the bolt. You got the weight. You can set it down. There. All right. Stop. Here we go. Oh, it doesn't go deep in there, doesn't it? Why is that so? There we go. All right. Lift it up. There it is. Once we had the legs out, we were extremely relieved, but we, we then uh, had to take the ram out of the leg, which was a pretty simple process. And then we took that ram to a nearby hydraulic shop. All right, I'm a dirty mess, but we got it out successfully. So now we're gonna take it over to the hydraulic shop and see what they have to say. We did have a cop just stop by and make sure we weren't dumping anything down the drain, but he seemed cool with us doing this, so. Yeah, he was a nice guy, but it does look suspicious what we're doing over here. All right, here it is. We completely disassembled the leg. This is the actual hydraulic cylinder that lifts up our RV. This is what we are going to take to the hydraulic guy to get repaired. Um, whoops. This thing uh, can actually come apart. You see this uh, gland at the end here. They can uh, unscrew this and take it out. And inside here is a piston and uh, they'll probably put new seals on that. So this is a very different system than you see on a lot of new fifth wheels. Most new fifth wheels uh, with their Lippert systems and such use uh, the actual hydraulic ram. This part that sticks out is exposed to the elements. It sticks down and they've got some anti-corrosion things on it and stuff like that. But um, as you can see with this one, because it's inside this leg, and although this thing is 11 years old and you can see it's got corrosion on here from being splashed around and stuff like that, this part up here is out of the elements and is completely corrosion free. So it seems like this is actually a pretty good design uh, for a hydraulic leg like this because they just sit extended all the time. If you're by the ocean or something, this is gonna corrode and then it's gonna start to leak and fail. Granted, this thing failed internally over time, but doesn't seem like a bad design to me. We took it to Danny's Hydraulic in... Uh, Robertsdale, Alabama. Robertsdale, Alabama. And while they uh, didn't have the fanciest place, they really seemed to know their stuff. They had all kinds of hydraulic stuff torn apart and they looked at them and they went, oh yeah, we can get those fixed for you. Danny's Hydraulics. We're gonna go see what they say. Hello. This looks like you know, kind of place to get a fix. Mm -hmm. You guys look like you know what you're doing. Yes, sir. Excellent. Danny's been doing it for since '96. All right. Adam's been doing it about 50. 
We just dropped off our hydraulics here with Danny's Hydraulics in Robertsdale, Alabama. They really seem to know their stuff here, which is good, and uh, they seem like they'll be able to get to it. They're going to give us a call tonight after they get them torn down, make sure there's no other major problems. We also got a couple plugs so we can plug up our lines and hopefully be able to move our slides out, which would be really great because it's all one system. Can't move the slides right now without dumping hydraulic fluid everywhere. And they got it done really quickly. We dropped it off uh, Monday and it was done on Wednesday. We went and picked them up on Wednesday. And they had actually improved upon the original rams. Inside the rams there's actually like a like a piston that goes up and down and that piston is what holds the fluid from passing by and they actually changed the shape. I think they actually milled out the piston head and put a different seal on it completely. A bigger more stout seal so it should hold a lot better. So, and then let's talk about price. So, uh, they only charged us, what, it was about $200 to do this fix for us. Whereas, uh, if we had been able to get into Roberts, which we were really thinking about doing, it was probably going to cost us over $1,200, plus the drive up to Indiana from Alabama. So, we were really pleased with that price. We were very satisfied with, with their work ethic and, and turning that around real fast for us. So, very pleased overall. So, it was a huge cost savings to us, which was really great, but this is a pretty challenging thing to do if you're not really comfortable with do-it-yourself type of stuff. You know, having a professional do this is probably the right way to do it. We were really stressed out. I've never really worked on a lot of hydraulic systems, so yeah. this was pretty stressful for us. But and, and we would have gone the route of Roberts if he could have gotten us in sooner, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so once we got those legs back, um, they were clearly stiffer. It was really hard to move that piston um, just in itself. So we just reassembled the legs and basically reversed the process of getting the legs put back into the RV. All right, everyone, we are back here at Walmart again over our hole that we're going to put our landing legs back in. Kyle and Olivia are with us again <laughs> to up? help us out, which is awesome. We are just going to reverse the process that we did before and put it back in and hook them all up. I did have some trouble getting the actual fittings back into the rams themselves. It was a bit of a challenge because it's a very tight space and well, that's they good. must have had a very specific way they did it at the factory because I had a really hard time getting it back together. But once I got it all back together and we hooked them back up, it all looked right. <laughs> Ah, uh, we're through. Didn't let go. It's true. All right, I'm just putting the electrical back on. All the hydraulic lines are hooked back up. Then we had to refill the rams with the hydraulic fluid because they were just full of air at that point. I'm just blocking up this side to prevent this from moving very much while we fill that side with hydraulic fluid. And then we'll come back over and we'll do the same to this side. But since it's full of air, it'll only fill halfway and I don't want it to suck air back to that side when we lift the jack up. Here we go. Here it goes. Has the air in it. Man, it's really hammering. All right, we kind of stopped filming because Kyle and Olivia had to take off and we had to do this together. Um, it did not go well at first. Filling it, uh, it was putting pressure on the top and, and sucking it down and it was really, it was really jerky. And then it wouldn't raise it back up. We had to help fill, lift it up so that we could get the fluid to start forcing it into the cylinder. But once we were able to get one cycle completed, it actually started to go pretty nicely. We ran it up and down three times. It's going up and down nice and smooth now. Now we just have to move this over and do the same to the other side. We are filling this with hydraulic fluid and the reservoir level is decreasing. So we need to add more fluid to the reservoir. These hydraulic systems take automatic transmission fluid.
Once we got them all filled with fluid, we took a break because the hydraulic reservoir was full of foam because it had all kinds of air move through that pump and into that reservoir. And we wanted to let that foam settle out so we weren't pushing fluid back into the system. But after a couple hours, actually, we discovered another problem with our RV. We had broken off a wheel stud. So I went ahead and fixed that. And by the time that was fixed, then we went ahead and actually tested the landing gear out. So we put the landing gear down and we unhitched the truck and we pulled away and crossed our fingers and we went down and felt it because before it was moving so slow you couldn't really see the front falling down but if you put your hand on the leg you could feel it slowly sinking and we were both holding onto the legs and we were like oh it's, not God, moving. it's not going anywhere and that's it now as you can see behind us we are still holding up. This has been four days of it holding itself up. They're also not falling down. We had a lot of problems with them falling down while we were driving. They would droop towards the road and we did actually have one the first time it fell down, reach the road, 60 miles an hour going down the highway and we could hear it grinding on the road, which could have been horrible. So ever since then, we always tied them up, but now, they don't fall down anymore. They don't have to be tied up anymore. <laughs> so anyway, we've got it fixed as far as we know, and we're really happy with the fix. Um, it was definitely a nerve wracking process. It was very stressful, but uh, we're really happy with the results. Again, really big thank you to Kyle and Olivia over at Driving and Vibin' for coming out and helping us with that for those two days. Really appreciated having some extra eyes and hands and brains on that while we were going through that very stressful time. All right, guys, well, that was today's show. Thank you so much for watching, as always. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button for more videos on do-it-yourself, fix-it stuff on RVs and adventure. And give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you. I hope you guys aren't having hydraulic problems, but if you have or are having some, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and hopefully we can help you out. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.